And we can begin by visualizing ourselves either as we are now, or it might be at, um, at a time when, um, when we've been feeling particularly vulnerable. And it would probably help if everyone would um, make sure that their mute is on right now. Mute the audio. So let's begin. May I be well, safe, and peaceful. May I be well, safe, and peaceful. May I be free from the suffering caused by fear, by anger, by ill will. May I be free from the suffering caused by fear, by anger, by ill will. May I find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May I find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May I cultivate loving kindness compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May I cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May I live in peace and harmony with all beings. May I live in peace and harmony with all beings. May I be well, safe, and peaceful.
May I be free from the suffering caused by fear, by anger, by ill will. May I find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May I cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May I live in peace and harmony with all beings. May I be well, safe, and peaceful. May I be free from the suffering caused by fear, by anger, by ill will. <laughs> May I find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May I cultivate loving kindness compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May I live in peace and harmony with all beings. May my family and friends be well, safe, and peaceful. May my family and friends be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May my family and friends find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another.
May my family and friends cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May my family and friends live in peace and harmony with all beings. May my family and friends be well safe, peaceful, may my family and friends be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May my family and friends find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May my family and friends cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May my family and friends live in peace and harmony with all beings. May my family and friends be well, safe, and peaceful. May my family and friends be free from the suffering caused by fear by anger, by ill will. May my family and friends find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May my family and friends cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity.
May my family and friends live in peace and harmony with all beings. May members of my spiritual community be well, safe, and peaceful. May they be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May they find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May members of my spiritual community cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May the members of my community live in peace and harmony with all beings. May everyone in my spiritual community be well, safe, and peaceful. May everyone in my community be free from the suffering caused by fear, by anger, by ill will. May they all find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. <clears throat> May they all cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May they all live in peace and harmony with all beings. May everyone in my spiritual community be well, safe, and peaceful. May everyone in my spiritual community be free from the suffering caused by fear, by anger, by ill will. May everyone find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May everyone cultivate loving kindness, compassion, 
appreciative joy, and equanimity. May everyone in my spiritual community live in peace and harmony with all beings. And now we extend the bounds of our loving kindness practice and use our imagination May all my neighbors, known and unknown, in this city, this state, and this region, be well, safe, and peaceful. May all my known and unknown neighbors be free from the suffering caused by fear, by anger, by ill will. May they all find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they all cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May all these known and unknown persons live in peace and harmony with all beings. May my known and unknown neighbors in this city, state, and region be well, safe, and peaceful. May they all be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May they all find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they all cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May they all live in peace and harmony with all beings. May all my known and unknown neighbors be well, safe, and peaceful. May they all be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will.
may they find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May they live in peace and harmony with all beings. And now again, using our imagination and our open hearts, let's bring into this field of loving kindness, this boundless field, all those persons affected by the pandemic, those who are isolated, isolating persons who have lost family members, friends, persons who've lost their livelihoods, and those persons who put themselves at risk for the sake of others by doing essential jobs. Very, very large field of metta for these many thousands of people all over the world. May all affected persons be well, safe, and peaceful. May all affected persons be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May they all find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they all cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. And may they all live in peace and harmony with all beings. May all persons affected by the pandemic be well, safe, and peaceful. May they all be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May they find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May all of them live in peace and harmony with all beings. May all persons affected by the pandemic be well, safe, and peaceful.
all persons affected by the pandemic be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May all persons find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. And may they all cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. And may they all live in peace and harmony with all beings. And now let's open our hearts to all those people who in the words of the Beatitudes, hunger and thirst for justice. All those who are involved in anti-racist efforts and all those who have been harmed by racism. May all who hunger and thirst for justice be well, safe, and peaceful. May they be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, ill will. May they find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy and equanimity. May they live in peace and harmony with all beings. May all those who hunger and thirst for justice be well, safe and peaceful. May they be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May they find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May they live in peace and harmony with all beings. May all who hunger and thirst for justice be well, safe, and peaceful. May they be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May they find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another.
may they cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May they live in peace and harmony with all beings. And now we invite into our field of loving kindness those for whom it's challenging for us to include sometimes those who have hurt us and who hurt others. But we wish them to be free from suffering. So may all who act and harm people out of fear, hatred, and delusion be well, safe, peaceful. May they be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May they find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. And may they live in peace and harmony with all beings. May all persons who act out of fear, hatred, and delusion be well, be safe, be peaceful. May they be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May they find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May they live in peace and harmony with all beings. May all those who act out of fear, hatred, and delusion be well, safe, and peaceful. May they be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May they find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May they live in peace and harmony with all beings. May all who act out of fear, hatred, and delusion be well, safe, and peaceful.
may they all be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May they all find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May they all cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. May all who act out of fear, hatred, and delusion learn to live in peace and harmony with all beings. And now in our boundless field of loving kindness, we bring everyone together that we've offered loving kindness to this evening. Ourselves, family, friends, members of our spiritual community, neighbors known and unknown in our city and state and region. <coughs> Excuse me. All those persons affected by the pandemic, all those thousands of persons, and all those thousands of persons who hunger and thirst for justice. And we also include those who have harmed out of fear, hatred, and delusion. For all of us, may we all be well, safe, and peaceful. May we all be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. May we all find forgiveness for the inevitable harms we bring to one another. May we all cultivate loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. And may we all live in peace and harmony with all beings. And let's just sit for a few more minutes with this beautiful aspiration for all of us to be free from suffering and to live in peace and harmony with all beings.
So thank you for doing that practice um, with me. Uh, before the pandemic, I um, would um, go to um, a correctional facility, a maximum security correctional facility that I've been going to for a very long time with another group of volunteers. And we always did that practice um, with, the, um, with the men there. And it was always just a really moving um, practice. So take a minute if you want to stretch, move around uh, a little bit. Thank you. Yep, I need to do that. Anyone wants to comment on anything about that practice? You can either just unmute yourself or you could put it in the chat. Okay. So I mentioned at the very beginning um, that I was really noticing feelings of um, separation and sadness and disappointment over the past um, few days. And um, it was over the sense that the values that are most important to me are not uniformly shared across the country. They're not shared by about half of the uh, electorate. And uh, you know, as a practitioner, my desire is to feel um, connected, to be in this field of loving kindness with others. And I just really noticed this, this very sad sense of separation. Um, you know, my ideal and uh, <clears throat> of loving kindness is in uh, the loving kindness sutra that we often chant at common ground. You know, the Buddha's words on loving kindness, when he says, let none deceive another, nor despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another. Even as a mother protects with her life, her child, her only child. So with a boundless heart, should one cherish all living beings radiating over the entire world, spreading upward to the skies, downward to the depths, outwards and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will. You know, that is such a, a beautiful um, vision. Um, it's also very idealistic. Um, about cherishing all beings. It's very idealistic about um, motherhood. Um, and sometimes it's, it's painful for people who have not had that um, warm motherly experience to read the Buddhist words. But you know, this, this idea of um, you know, radiating kindness over the entire world, um, and I aspire to it, um, but right now at this point, what I'm really looking for are some very um, practical and grounded um, teachings. And many of you have probably heard the story about Ananda, the Buddha's younger cousin and his attendant um, at one time, uh, and Ananda is just one of, in, in the Pali literature, Ananda is truly just one of the most appealing of all of the, um, the bhikkhus and his goodness and his sincerity and his service. And uh, so Ananda said to the Buddha, um, Venerable Lord, it seems to me that having good companions is half the holy life. And the Buddha said, oh no, Ananda, do not say that. Do not say that, Ananda, for that is not so. Good companions are the whole of the holy life. So this idea that what really helps us 
and strengthens us in our resolve is really having good spiritual friends. That that is what in, in times of, of difficulty, it is our spiritual friends, our friends who share our values and, uh, and our commitments that really support us. So uh, one of the things we can do um, to support this intention of living without harming is to really take refuge in our spiritual community to seek out those who share your commitment to non-harming and uh, your commitment to compassion and uh, to living a moral life. And in Pali, there's a word sila, S-I-L-A, and it's, it's often translated either as morality or as living in harmony, or it, it's sometimes translated as uh, integrity. It's kind of the foundation of an ethical life. And it, um, it suggests that there are certain sorts of uh, trainings, moral trainings that ground us in, uh, in our lives. And it's to refrain from uh, killing, killing living beings, to refrain from stealing or taking that which is not freely given to us, to refrain from sexual misconduct, to refrain from false and harmful speech, and to refrain from consuming substances that, um, that cloud uh, the mind. And these are sometimes called the training precepts. And at Common Ground, uh, we traditionally have done them every quarter. And we often use an elaboration of these um, by uh, Thich Nhat Hanh. But I've very recently become aware of um, an uh, expansion of these by uh, Catriona Reed, who is a, a Zen, um, a Zen practitioner, and um, she has an acknowledgement of, of these, um, an expression of, of these um, precepts about not killing, not stealing, not engaging in sexual misconduct, not speaking falsely, and not consuming um, substances that are detrimental uh, in a way that puts it in, in a larger context. Um, and um, so this is the way uh, Catriona Reed talks about them. Aware of the violence in the world and of the power of nonviolent resistance, I stand in the presence of ancestors, the earth, and future generations and vow to cultivate the compassion that seeks to protect each living being. The second training, aware of the poverty and greed in the world and of the intrinsic abundance of the earth, I stand in the presence of ancestors, the earth and future generations and vow to cultivate simplicity, gratitude, and generosity that have no limits. Aware of the abuse and lovelessness in the world and of the healing made possible when we open to love, I stand in the presence of the ancestors, the earth, and future generations and vow to cultivate respect for the beauty and erotic power of our bodies. Aware of the falsehood and deception in the world and of the power of living and speaking the truth, I stand in the presence of ancestors, the earth and future generations and vow to cultivate the ability to listen and to practice clarity and integrity in all that I communicate by my words and by my actions. Aware of the contamination and desecration of the world and of my responsibility for life 
as it manifests through me. I stand in the presence of the ancestors, the earth, and future generations, and vow to cultivate care and right action, to honor and respect the health and well being for my body, my mind, and the planet. And I love this expression of these precepts, these training vows, because it, um, it recognizes that we do come from, come with some lineage, with some legacy, with our own particular karma on this earth, and that our actions will have consequences for future generations. And this is a really expansive view of, of living in harmony. And you know, we can also think about our, um, our ancestors in terms of the practitioners that have come before us from the time of the Buddha until now, people who have, have practiced and have um, transmitted these teachings. We also can think of our own, uh, our own families, which is sometimes a really mixed legacy um, of, um, you know, both um, harm and, um, and goodness. And to stand on this earth to really feel our deep, deep connectedness with life on this planet, to realize that our actions reverberate and affect uh, that we are, we are part of this living community and our actions have this effect on our planet. And also that we act um, out of love and regard for future generations. And I just find that so um, helpful, this attitude toward our, um, you know, really, really examining our behavior. And you know, one of the things that uh, has often been said is that um, you know it's hard to be mindful if you are stealing and murdering and um, you know behaving um, in in kind of, of profligate ways. But if we think about it, we really look to our own experience. It's kind of a, a grounding in. Um, in this basic training of non-harming, of speaking carefully and truthfully, um, not harming ourselves, not harming others, that that really supports our mindfulness practice. And in turn, our mindfulness practice um, enables us to, um, to look with greater care at our own, our own actions. You know, the, the fourth and the fifth, if we think about, about our mindfulness practice, you know, we begin to notice, we begin to look so much more carefully, you know, aware of the falsehood and deception in the world and the power of living and speaking the truth. You know, that, when we bring mindfulness to that, when we bring mindfulness toward our, our actions and we see the power of, um, of living and speaking the truth um, and aware of, of the harm that's done to the earth, you know, really taking that on. We bring our mindfulness uh, to, um, to our experience. It really, uh, encourages us to act with even more, more care. And I think that, you know, for those um, with whom I disagree, I truly wish for them to be free from the suffering caused by fear, by anger, by ill will. You know, I do wish for them to find forgiveness. Um, and the ability to forgive others. Um, and still, you know, our, our integrity, our commitment demands that we, um, we be clear in our, uh, in our thoughts, 
and in our actions about what is and is not acceptable behavior. And so, you know, our, um, for me at least, the, the training in the precepts um, is really a grounding, the grounding that enables me, I think, to practice metta, this kind of, of clarity. Um, and metta is also supported by equanimity. You know, equanimity that um, it's one of the um, four divine abodes. There's you no know, loving kindness and compassion and appreciative joy and equanimity. And equanimity is really that very, very mature understanding that takes the big picture, that um, doesn't fall into, into extremes, that stays balanced, that stays steadfast. And um, I found a wonderful comment about this by uh, Oren J. Sofer, who's a terrific um, teacher. He says, the wisdom of equanimity understands that we choose neither the circumstances of our life nor the results of our actions. And this is really a huge teaching. The wisdom of equanimity, of taking the big picture, of understanding um, impermanence, of understanding the suffering in the world, of understanding the sort of um, impersonal nature of, of phenomena. The wisdom of equanimity understands that we choose neither the circumstances of our life nor the results of our actions. We can't control uh, the consequences of our actions. We can't control how people um, respond to, uh, to us. Um, we can often have our, our very best, most uh, heartfelt efforts um, come to naught. And equanimity understands that um, we don't choose the circumstances of our life. We can't control our actions. And yet we always try to act with wisdom, with kindness, to act for the good, to act with this um, intention, this concern for the welfare of others, now, that's one way of thinking about metta, you know, concern for the, for, the, for the welfare of others. And we can hold that and uh, speak truth to power. Um, we can work for, um, for justice, even when it seems that, you know, the, the moral arc that Martin Luther King Jr. talked about is bending very, very slowly. You know, we ground ourselves in our, our practice of commitment to this sort of um, nonviolent living in harmony. And I think what helps sustain us during this time is really to, um, to find um, persons who share our principles and our views, and we work together with them toward uh, a better world, a more equitable world, a kinder world, a world where we do live in peace and harmony with all beings. And just finding people to live with in peace and harmony um, ourselves, I think is um, enormously helpful in, um, in a time like this where there is so much divisiveness. It's not to be in any sense tribal. It's to ground ourselves in these um, really beautiful principles about, um, about living nonviolently and protecting that which needs to be protected. And I want to um, end my remarks tonight with a poem that has really helped me a lot in these past couple of weeks. And it's by 
Um, and I grabbed the wrong book. Uh, by Joanna Macy. And um, Joanna Macy is a, a remarkable, I can't find it. Remarkable person who um, has, um, she's 90 years old now and she has been um, steadfast in her activism about um, working for the good of the earth. Yeah. Am I not gonna be able to find this? Not in here, in here. Ah, here. Now I'm juggling too many books right now, I think. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing. Okay, so this is what Joanna Macy has to say. When you act on behalf of something greater than yourself, you begin to feel it acting through you with a power that is greater than your own. This is grace. Today, as we take risks for the sake of something greater than our separate individual lives, we are feeling graced by other beings and by earth itself. Those with whom and on whose behalf we act give us strength and eloquence and staying power we didn't know we had. We just need to practice knowing that and remembering that we are sustained by each other in the web of life. Our true power comes as a gift like grace because in truth it is sustained by others. If we practice drawing on the wisdom and beauty and strengths of our fellow human beings and our fellow species, we can go into any situation and trust that the courage and intelligence required will be supplied. I'll read that last stanza again. If we practice drawing on the wisdom and beauty and strengths of our fellow human beings and our fellow species, we can go into any situation and trust that the courage and intelligence required will be supplied. And I find that so heartening to trust each other, to trust the natural world. Um, some of you may have, um, have read that wonderful book by Richard Powers, The Overstory. It's a, a great, huge um, novel um, that's really about trees, about the amazing, uh, power of trees and trees in, in our, our lives. Uh, so if we can, can learn to feel ourselves here on this earth, uh, important people on the planet, it's important what we do for ourselves, for our planet, for each other, and work with each other to, to practice this, this beautiful metta this concern for the welfare of all, with the hope that we all will be able to live in peace and harmony. So I really appreciate your um, being here tonight and I would be delighted if um, people had any responses to the evening's practice, any comments, any questions, clarification. So just, um, Unmute yourself and jump in.
you know, there's this wonderful practice um, called sharing the, the merit. And it is just as in, um, you know, meta where we, we imagine people, we bring them to mind and we visualize and can be very creative um, with that. Uh, so too with this idea of, of sharing the merit, it's a kind of act of uh, imaginative generosity. So um, we'll end with, with that. So I encourage you to, um, to just bring in anyone you would like to offer um, offer this goodness to. So begins with, if there's any benefit to our practice tonight, any goodness, any merit, any blessings that we receive from what we've done tonight together, we would happily, joyfully, gladly share this with others, give it away completely to others, known and unknown. To those we know, our family, friends, teachers, coworkers, colleagues, to those unknown people all over the world. And we can again remember people who are affected by the pandemic, people who are struggling for justice, um, people who are feeling separate and anxious and confused tonight. For all those people, we would share our practice and we would also happily, gladly, joyfully share it with the two-leggeds, the four-leggeds, the two-winged, and even with the plants and the trees and all those, all those forms of life that sustain us. May all beings benefit. May all beings live with peace and ease and find a path that is sustaining and helps them live in peace and harmony. So thank you very much and take care.